What do you think? I think it looks great. Yeah? I got me Nicole, I got me old fiddle With the sun's coming up, I got cakes on the griddle Life ain't nothing <sighs> Something really awful just happened We had a bear come through the yurt We just got home It did one place of damage Recording this? God dang it. This is like Hurricane Nicole. Stop. <laughs> this brush is awesome. Yeah. It's bamboo. Why are you sprayed? You're spraying my whole face. <laughs> Ow! <sighs> hey! Wow, <laughs> I put a lot of water on it. <laughs> you think? I didn't go to school for this. <laughs> so this is a nine? nine millimeter. I use this for the length of my oh. beard. So you want a so, two I don't know. One, right? I usually ask for a two, but it's not the same. Like, it's as well. Oh my god. Yeah, it's already. Yeah. Nicole's done a good job in my hair like four times, but. There's one time where it just didn't One time I had to buzz it. <laughs> but I grew back, so. Yeah. Do you like my hair when it's buzzed? Um, it's not, you don't like bad. It's not my favorite, but it's not hmm. bad. How many guys out there in the comments keep their hair in a way that their wife or girlfriend has told them they like it? I'm interested to know, because I think it's, I always like hearing like, Nicole, like how do you want my hair? And I like to do it the way she likes it. Controls me, she's got me bathing in her embrace. Look at Nishi. He's staring at it. He's just staring at the wall. It's like we put him in timeout. Look at me, he's, just, he's like waiting for a bug or something. <laughs> what is he staring at? He's so focused. It's okay, Rishi, you can come out of the corner. Rishi. 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 <laughs> like, what? What do you think? I think I did a really good job. Hmm. Honestly, the back looks like seamless. So here, you like it? Stand up and brush off. And then you can go look in the mirror. Okay. <laughs> brush you off. It's gonna be a little bit too much. What do you think? I think it looks great. Yeah. Yeah, I like. I think it. I did a really good job. Honestly, the back looks really good. Let me zoom in on your face. <laughs> Like I was looking nappy, so I, I feel like this is back to me and it feels yeah. tightened. When I have like, when my hair cuts clean, I feel like I can do athletic stuff. Spin. I oh. should have done a before and after. Not too shabby. All right, I'm open Mondays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays between one and two.
right, so workout's done. Don't mind my nasty hair. I look kind of gross. I really need to take a shower. <laughs> um, anyway, workout's done. We still got all of our chanterelles over here drying out. A cool drying system here. And yeah, so today's kind of one of those days where there's really not a whole lot to vlog. Just kind of getting some projects that need to be finished up, finished. And yeah, so. Well, I got me Nicole, I got me old fiddle, with the sun's coming up, I got cakes on the griddle. Life ain't nothing but a funny, funny riddle. Woohoo! That guy, I'm a country boy! That guy, I'm Canadian! Oh my gosh. And that breezy and colder. It's cold. Whew. Ooh, you know what we can start making? Hot cocoa with yeah. marshmallows. Nice. Ooh. Yeah. So, sorry it's really dark, it's kind of dark here, but um, <sighs> something really awful just happened. Mm. This is hard to say, <laughs> but um, we had a bear come through the yurt, we just got home. We had to run to town really quick to drop our friend Matt off because he's setting sail on this really awesome journey to this island, blah, 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 design. And we get back and there's a hole in the yurt and things knocked over and the cats are fine, which is the main concern. I like booked it over here and they were hiding up in the loft, thank God. I'm like shaking right now. Oh, but let me show you the damage and um, what the bear went through. We have a vinyl window right here, like a fabric window, and it just went through that part right there. Knocked over some plants. Stuff. Here's one kitty. He's okay. The other one's up there in the loft. Oh man, this really sucks, honestly, but that's life. Let me show you the kitchen. Like This is seriously the only food that it got into. Some beans and flour, some raisins and some marshmallows. What were you worried about when you first came in here, number one thing? The cats. Yeah, the cats are okay. Yes. And then number two thing, like it didn't break all of our all of our favorite pottery and 
non-replaceables that we've acquired from different artists and things over the years. It did one place of damage, and I'm sure I can contact the good people at Pacific Yurts and probably get a replacement patch for this that we'll implement ourselves and for tonight seal it with the patch we already have and some duct tape and some fabric glue in. I mean, I, it's, it's bad. I don't want to deal with this tonight. But it could have been worse. It could, it could have been worse. Yeah. It's not one of the windows. It's not the door. It's not a screen. You just had to patch up a part that was already sealed in. Yeah. And nobody is leaving Komorebi unless there is at least one person left here to watch the yurt from now on. I mean, honestly. Yeah. Okay, update on the bear situation. We met the most rude, um, but also the most polite bear of all time. Like, I don't know if you can see behind me there on that side. You can see how Nicole will point right now to where the bear came in through the lattice wall. So that's where the bear came in. But literally that window you see there, Pacific Yurts designed that as a vinyl window that Velcros on and Velcros off from the outside. And there's a flap that is green, which is the same material as the side cover, that you can unroll and zip down to make the yurt more insulated. But we have it rolled up because it lets more light in. So literally the bear came up to the outside of the yurt. We can see how he stood up and put his claws on the side wall. And then he just grabbed that Velcro vinyl window and he peeled off the Velcro. He didn't rip the yurt. He peeled off the Velcro. He did destroy the mesh screen and then he bit through the lattice wall. So tomorrow I'll be repairing the lattice wall and I'm hoping I can get on the phone with Pacific Yurts and get some sort of a replacement mesh. But honestly, I mean, Nicole, we've been saying it already. What did you say? It could have been a lot worse. Like 100%. This is like, bad, but a lot worse. The kittens are fine. That's my, that was my number one thing. Okay, cheers. <laughs> cheers. We did not want our night to go like that last night and... No but it is not as bad as it could have been. I know, which is so ridiculous to say, like, come on, we had a bear go through the yurt and come in here and eat some of our food. But it could have been so much worse. Like, we, we were pretty lucky, yeah. which is so ridiculous to say, and I never thought I would say that, but... But the one thing I'm worried about is that now the bear has tasted vegan marshmallows. It was like all the vegan marshmallows people sent us and yeah. he stole 80% of them. Yeah. He's now trained to know inside that yurt is fun time. Yeah. And I think it's the same bear that ate the mushroom outside that we got footage of on the past vlog. Mm -hmm. I think it's the same bear that Matt scared away, and I think it's the same bear that we saw this morning. Again, he came back this morning yeah. and peeked his head in the window, and I scared him off again. Yeah. So we were like waking up like every hour. Did you hear that? Was that a stick? Was that a stick breaking? <laughs> And this morning, you can from the loft, you can see the side window where the cat tower is, and it was trying to get back in, and so we scared it. And we woke up this morning to his face in the window. I saw yeah. his, we had his eye contact thing going. Yeah. And he's a big bear. He's a solitary bear. And I think there's a, many reasons why it's happening. So there's another person that owns a homestead, you know, acres and acres and acres away, and the few people in this area that have um, land there's a newsletter that goes around over email, and they emailed out literally yesterday. We had a break-in of a presumed dump bear yeah. that broke into our kitchen and stole some of our food, and they've been here for decades and decades and decades. Yeah, they've been here for like their whole lives. <laughs> and they have a beautiful home and a beautiful property and garden and infrastructure. So, and what this person meant by dump bear is that there's an old dump way far away from here. You can't walk to it, you have to drive to it that somebody had kind of quartered off a certain area of the wilderness out there to dump trash. And this year, the locals here covered that up and got a more professional dump a recycling, canister. Yeah, like a recycling center, which is really nice. But they used to have a dump where people would just go and dump their trash. So you can't go to this dump all the time, but they do have like a, like a couple hours. The new one. Yeah, so the new dump receptacle you can't go to all the time. It's not like we have a dump, but it's like a dump receptacle you can go to during this two-hour window once a week. And then if it fills up, they'll barge it off. Yeah. And Nicole and I think that, I mean, it makes sense to us 
we're newbies here, but it makes sense to us that a lot of bears were probably in the old dump when it was well, yeah. dumped on the ground the back in the past. Even, some of the locals even said that there was bears all oh. over in there, eating all the trash. So now that they, they covered it, so no one's even allowed to go up there anymore. They covered it completely with dirt, they bulldozered it and stuff like that. And so now all those bears that were up there are wandering around. And the locals we've talked to have just said this is the most bears they've seen in years. Yeah. So and now all those bears, they're not hanging out way up there with at, the the, dump. at the dump anymore. They're kind of like, okay, we need to go find somewhere else to get food. And But now they're trained to know that human stuff means food. Yeah. So to, to a bear, they look at a yurt or they look at a house and they just see, oh, this is the new dump. Mm -hmm. Let's go check out what's in there and the reason why we got up lucky is because you guys can see this window We now have the flap down to guard yeah. a little more and the bear literally didn't tear into the yurt He just pulled the velcro window off yeah. Almost like he was being polite saying I'm gonna steal your crap, but let me not destroy your crap yeah. But then he did destroy the lattice wall which I'll repair today um, And he did destroy the mesh screen that's on the inside of the velcro window We'll cut to some footage of it and show you what we're talking about right now So yeah, we got somewhat of a polite bear, I guess you would say. Um, but but now he's coming back. Lesson learned, and every someone is going to be here at all times, from now on, and you know shit happens. But we got it all cleaned up, and the food cleaned up, and the cats are are good alive. and settled down and alive. <laughs> we have jars of honey that I harvested with my friend Oliver Aloha Honeybee. There's, there's jars of jam. There's cereal, there's, jars of jam, syrup, juice. There's so there's quite a bit of food that we've been storing up for winter, and he literally only ate marshmallows and a bag of flour and, and some, noodles. some noodles. And that's it. And yeah. he didn't go to the bathroom in here, which is really good. Because yeah. he like left and went to the bathroom right outside there. So there's a big old pile of bear skin outside. Yeah. I need to put 100 percent of my focus into the deck because in my mind. We need a moat. We need to have some archers that block the yurt. And the deck is that. Because the deck won't just be a deck. It'll be a deck with a banister. So the bear would have to jump up a four-foot gap, then go up a five-foot banister, then go over onto the deck and be trapped. And I think it's just more deterrent for the bear. Also, what you said is there's always going to be somebody here now, at least one person, to defend the property. Yeah. I don't know if you guys understand the connection humans have to dogs. I mean, cats, our cats are so cute and amazing and cuddly and, and beautiful. But I've always had this connection to dogs. And part of me being out here was I wanted to have two or three dogs. That I, I love training dogs and I love dogs and my companions. And I've always wanted to have dogs on acres like this. And it's really hard for me to, to be here eight months now without a dog friend. If we had dogs, there wouldn't be bears here because the dogs would be our defenders. Mm -hmm. We haven't gotten the dogs yet because we've been going places and we haven't been able to to have yeah. somebody here to watch him. Yeah. We have one more trip coming up in which Matt will be here to watch the year while we're gone. So we were going to wait to adopt two puppies until about Thanksgiving time. Do you want to go adopt a dog now? Not a puppy, but just a dog that's like that we go save from the pound that becomes the defender dog and then adopt puppies later. So we'll have three dogs. I really want to adopt puppies. But I don't want to adopt puppies now and then leave Matt here with these new puppies without us. Mm -hmm. Do you want to go and adopt a dog? And mm -hmm. I sure. trained a dog to be our defender out here and build a little outdoor sure. kennel for the dog. And I, I'm getting the PAL um, certification and once that comes in then I'll have um, shotguns and hunting guns here in, in case the bear is not deterred by a horn or a bear flare gun or pepper spray. Yeah. Alright, so this has gone on too long. We just wanted to do a recap of last night and how we're feeling today and our steps of deterring the bear, but let's get on with the vlog and... So I'm going to make some pumpkin enchiladas for dinner. I've had these one other time with my mom. We made them together when I was visiting back in Oregon and they were so good like so good i'm going to make them for jake because he's never had them before and i want him to try them because they're really good just a couple of really simple easy ingredients first things first it says chop a handful of seitan 
boil in water for five minutes, then drain. I have a dried out seitan, so I'm just gonna soak this for a couple minutes and then I'm just gonna cook it, because it's already cut and it's already dried out, so. Okay, enchiladas are done. The one thing I love about this recipe is I don't have to use an oven, which is really nice. Uh, some enchiladas, I think you have to put them in the oven. Not this one, because obviously we don't have an oven. We just have a wood-burning stove, so they're on. Hopefully Jake likes them. I'm sure he will, he likes anything. They're tortillas. I think I got two small of ones, so I couldn't really put a whole bunch of stuff in the middle because uh, it kept squirting out, but I love that I was able to cook on the wood-burning stove. It just makes your food taste so much better. Dinner's ready. It is? Yep. Okay, can I just cut this last piece? Yeah. I really hope that you like these. I'm not sure how well they turned out. I can already tell you I'm gonna love them. Do you think that your traveling the world has made you a better cook? I think you've made me a better cook. Really? How's that? Because you're really good at cooking. They're sm like you not need way to too personal, small. Um, personal enchiladas. Looks cute though. Yeah. And there's a lot of enchilada sauce. And a bunch of seasoning. There's like ketchup in there. Yeah. I'm so afraid. It's really hard to tell. Like, the cats are actually a hindrance because I'm unable to tell when a bear is sneaking up because I think it's the cats. Cool. You cook this on the wood stove? Yeah. That's awesome. The whole thing. Mm. It's hot. <gasps> oh my gosh, it's so good. So good. Oh. Every night from now on, you just you just <laughs> imprison yourself to do these every night. Whatever, be I'm honest. I'm serious. I'm serious. I miss this kind of stuff. This is the kind of stuff I go for at Mexican restaurants. Mm. I feel like there's a lot of enchilada sauce, but let's just dice up an avocado and get the whole experience. Mm. Next time on Jake and Nicole Living Off Grid, we push a few projects back to prioritize bear security, which begins with electric fencing. Hey guys, so update on the bear situation. Hi. Do you think that you can undo that your first time doing it? Our friend Matt returns to protect the yurt so Nicole and I can adopt puppies. Subscribe and stay tuned.